Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna mount uh, 700R Raptor shocks to my 01660. And so to do that, I'm gonna modify my stock A-arms. And uh, so we'll get into that process and let's do it. Hey guys, um, just uh, back here now trying to mock up the shock. So this is the shock from a 2012 Raptor 700. Uh, as you can see, it's it's not quite fitting there. You can see there's a misalignment just slightly. So we got to take some material off here and allow that to come up. Uh, I've removed the springs just for ease of showing everything and for mock-up. The other situation here is at the bottom, you'll see uh, it doesn't quite line up as well for the hole because this plate, which extends underneath this bracket, is is hitting this. Uh, essentially, this is just slightly too thick. So what you got to do is you got to cut out the plate on the A arm. Uh, obviously, that to me is preferable because these can be replaced a lot easier than this than this clevis can. Um, the other thing you got to do is <clears throat> notch out a little bit of this material on the backing plate, just so it clears. So it clears this. You can see these shocks, uh, whoever I bought them from, you know, they must have been running them on something that didn't quite fit as well. You can see there's some, some markings there. Uh, so I'll cut that down and, and make that fit a little bit better. Um, I think that will do it for now. And then what you'll see is you'll see me kind of grinding this away. And then I'll show you how to how to cut this out. So right now with a pen, just to kind of Give me a guideline. So instead of just grinding it flat, I kind of wanted to give it a bit of a round shape, um, hopefully reducing any sort of like uh, stress points from fatigue you know, from the shock working over the bumps and whatnot. <clears throat> and then obviously, uh, wear your safety glasses. You are removing material. Quick, quick test. It should, should fit there. And should do. Let's take a bit more off just to be sure. Yeah. So this side, uh, this side is done. We might just, we might just clean this up a little bit this edge over here just to make it a little bit more uniform and uh, that's about it for this side and then we'll do the, the back side here now Test fit. Just a hair more, it looks like. Sorry if I'm blocking your view right now at the moment. Let's see. Bolt in it real quick just to double check it. You know what? That might actually be okay. I'll just clean that up, make it look a little nicer, more uniform. That'll be all right. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty... Pretty good clearance now. 
I'm really happy with that. Moving on, we're going to cut the bracket out of the bottom here so we can mount our shock. So what I did on the other side was I actually unbolted the A-arm from the frame and then I just simply swung it out and I was able to work on it that way. I kept the upper A-arm connected on the other side and that gave me some stability to, to maneuver the things around. So because I had rebuilt these A-arms earlier this year, um, I had greased the studs quite a bit. Um, if you're doing this for the first time in, in maybe a long time of, of taking this stuff apart, it's quite possible that these will be seized in, especially this upper one. Um, when I replaced these A-arms this, this year, I had to uh, I had to actually cut the bolt off and hammer it out. Um, it was not pretty, but we were able to get it out. Uh, it's just really annoying. The Yamaha bolt was like 20 bucks Canadian. Um, that's really all I got to add about that. So now that this A-arm, the lower one anyways, is undone, um, I can proceed to drilling all the holes. Using uh, the drill bit that you need require for the jigsaw, uh, it needs to be big enough for the blade to get in, right? So I'm using a 3 8 drill bit, and I'm just gonna put it in the corner like this. Same over here, and then somewhere just, just past the hole, uh, for the mounting hole. Probably right at the corner where this bracket kinda does a little kink. It does a little kink outwards, right there. I'll, I'll run this drill. I know this is uh, too big to start, but what it gives me is a good centering hole to, to use a smaller hole. So. I got three drill bit sizes here. The smallest one I'm going to start with is one eighth, and then I'm going to work up to an intermediate size of one quarter, and then up to a three eighths. Um, the three eighths itself is it's a little too big to to quickly get through that material. Once you're through, it's it's not too bad. It's just mild steel. It doesn't seem like it's uh, overly hard to to get through. It's just time consuming. Okay, so we've marked a center for these, and uh, I'll go down to the smaller one. Okay, so we punch through. I'm gonna go up to the intermediate size, which is the one quarter. Take that one out, put the big one in now. Okay. So all four holes are now been drilled. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me see if I can get the camera lined up. So I'm just going to cut lines now with the jigsaw and then cut that part out and then I'll smooth it all out with um, with the file and then after that what we got to do is see this little C channel right here we just got to take a small notch in the corners and just bring it down so it's almost even with this this bottom part right here and then that will allow the uh, aluminum clevis uh, let's see if I can show you here see how it kind of hits in the corners so once this is properly mounted, it'll be even tighter. So we got to take out a notch just a little bit, not much, and uh, clear some room.
Okay, so we've cut out the piece of metal here. You can see a nice little hole. Where's my shock? I'll mop that up for you. It sits in there just nice. And just to show you, you can see the aluminum now has lots of room to, to move around. Um, the only thing left now is just to create a little notch here and a little notch on the corner. And uh, then we'll be done with the lower A arms. And then after that, we'll just simply paint it up and, and call, it call it a day. So that's it. So to create that slight little notch in there, I'm actually going to switch out the flapper wheel to uh, an actual grinding disc. Obviously make sure your grinder's unplugged while you do this. The last thing you want is to turn on with your fingers in the way. So there's really no scientific uh, process to this, you're just kind of eyeballing it up. Just to, to notch it down a bit and then we'll clean it up with the Dremel tool afterwards. Okay, we'll mop the shock up again real quick. And that gives us lots of room here. Uh, so one more thing I'm gonna do is put the uh, A-arm back in the frame. And then I'm just gonna run the shock through its motions. Okay, so I just mopped it up. Everything's just loose. Um, so I put the A-arm lower bolt back in and then I just put the bolts in for the shock. Now all I'm gonna do is just run the shock through its motions by lifting on the uh, hub and just make sure it's not binding anywhere. I should point out, this is, this is the critical reason why um, this shock needs to be 15 and 3 quarters of an inch long, otherwise known as 40 centimeters in the metric world. Um, and then the reason is, when it's fully extended the way it is, when you have your A-arms, your steering fully cocked to one side, um, you want to be sure that this this tie rod doesn't want to hit anything and it's pretty tight right there right so you got to be extra sure with the way things are and the only time this this will occur is when you're up in the air with the handlebars fully turned one way and this is this is the critical part so it's unlikely that your handlebars will be turned one way that far but you never know. So anyways, we're just going to lift this up. You can see the shock go through its motions. And I got lots of clearance all the way around the, clev the clevis down here. And I got lots of clearance up in here and on the other side as well. So once the spring is on, then it'll be really tight. But the reason I'm doing this now without the spring is one, I don't want to mark up my freshly painted spring, and two, it just makes it a lot easier to get in and out of this A-arm. Just for comparison, I'll, I'll throw the back, the, the stock one back in. I should also mention, when you guys are doing this, do not mark up this shaft. This, it's very critical, you don't get any nicks into the shaft, otherwise it's just going to destroy your seals. So here's the stock OEM shock. I'm just going to put it back in place just, just as a way to compare the two sides. There it is. Now with a full droop, you can still see it's almost touching, right? So it's a little bit of more, a tiny, tiny bit of clearance there, more so than, than the other shock, but I'm, I'm not worried about this at all. Okay, so the only thing I left to do now is prep the A-arms for paint, and, uh, and then put a couple coats of paint on them. So you can see how they're a bit of purple tinge to them. Um, hopefully with the, the new spray can, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so I've removed the uh, upper AR from the bike and I'm just going to give it a quick sand here with some, some Scotch-Brite 
just so that the uh, new coat of paint will have something to adhere to. Uh, once I'm done with this, then I'll just uh, rub it down with some, some brake clean and uh, make sure it's all nice and dry and then I'll give it a coat of paint. Okay, so I got the upper A-arm all taped off and the ball joint all taped off. I'm just going to give it a couple light coats. And so when I initially had done this, I actually used a, a base coat. This is pretty thin stuff, but I'm just trying to color match it more or less to lay down thick stuff. So we'll just let that dry for a bit, and then we'll put another second coat on here in a minute. You're just trying to clean this up a bit, uh, so there's no burrs on it. Um, Really, it's all we're doing. Um, now I'll degrease this arm, and then I'll scuff it up as well, and then I'll paint it. So I just gave uh, both control arms, uh, A arms, a uh, light dusting of paint. Um, this is the first coat on the bottom. Just gonna let it tack up a bit. And not entirely, cl entirely clean in there, but for what I want, it, it won't matter a whole lot. Just trying to make make the color match a bit better, but also cover all the bare metal. That's, that's what we're after here. Um, so we'll give it a few minutes, and then uh, I'll put another couple coats on it, and then we'll bolt it all back together. And then for now, I'll put the old springs on, and then once my new springs, um, the collars, the shock collars, get here, then I'll, I'll put it all together, and then I'll mount them, and then we'll do an after picture. Got the airs on, we got the, the old shock back on for now until I get those parts for the new ones. Um, everything's been painted, everything's torqued down, and uh, we're good to go. So let's put the bodywork back on it and then uh, clean up the garage and we'll call it a day. Hopefully uh, you guys found that uh, helpful and, and uh, best of luck in your projects. Take care. Bye.